Thank you, Bruce. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm Reverend Kathy from Unity North <coughs> Spiritual Center in Coon Rapids, Minnesota. So whoever you are, wherever you are on your spiritual path, you're welcome here, and we're glad you're with us today, whether you're in person or virtual. And uh, we are also part of a greater worldwide unity movement. We are the publishers of the Daily Word magazine, and we've been holding 133 years of prayer vigil through Silent Unity, the prayer ministry of the unity movement. So prayer is the heart and soul of unity. And our prayer chaplain today, who is available to pray with you right after service, is Gretchen Hansen. Want to wave, Gretchen? And uh, her phone will be available at announcements and also on the chat, I think. And um, also, this is her last day as prayer chaplain praying with us. She's moving on to some other um, aspects of the ministry. So we just want to thank you, Gretchen, for all of your service through this uh, time of COVID praying uh, online and before that. So let's give her a big hand. All right, and today um, Chris is away, so our producer is Tracy Roloff, and her assistant today is Nancy Helvig. Thank you both for being here. And our um, worship assistant and board president is Wanda Horner Carlson. And we welcome our musician today, uh, Bruce. Um, Manier Bell, and before we do, I'm going to just speak our vision and mission together with you. So just, you can stay there for one second, and uh, we'll share the screen, and I'll speak our, our vision and mission with you. So our vision is our ideal future reality, and so I invite you to speak this with me together. Centered in prayer, we create for all a world of love, harmony, and abundance. And our mission is what we are in the business of doing. It's how we get to our vision. And let's speak this together. Celebrating spirit, exploring truths, awakening hearts, inspiring dreams, serving community. And then you see our values. We won't speak them every week, but this is the, what the underpinning of our beliefs. So thank you for that, and now Bruce will leave. God's love is deep within me, and then God's life and light and power and truth and love. Sing all those verses. Here we go. God's love is deep within me, ever satisfying my soul. God's love is deep within me, ever satisfying my soul. God's life, God's life is deep within me, ever satisfying my soul. God's life is deep within me, ever satisfying my soul. God's light, God's light is deep within me, ever satisfying my soul. God's light is deep within me, ever satisfying my soul. God's power, God's power is deep within me, ever satisfying my soul. God's power is deep within me, ever satisfying my soul. Truth, God's truth is deep within me. Ever satisfying my soul, God's truth is deep within me. Ever satisfying my soul, God's love, God's love is deep within me. Ever satisfying my soul, God's love is deep within me. Ever satisfying my soul. Thank you so much, Bruce. What a great way to start our morning. I think we've all kind of missed that in-person singing aspect. So that's great this morning. So at this point in our service, we want to welcome everyone. 
And so if you are here in person, if you want to greet each other um, with a wave and in the back, the camera, you can look right at the folks that are here on Zoom and we can just give each other a big wave today. Everyone welcome. <coughs> All right, and if there is anyone here for the first time today, could you just raise your hand? I don't see any hands, but everyone is most certainly welcome. We're glad to have you all here today. And if there is anyone joining us for the first time, you can request a welcome packet here in person or on the website to receive one of those as well. And at this point in our service, we will take prayer we will do our prayer requests. And rather than saying them out loud for all to hear, we invite you to just speak the name or thought in your head silently or allowed in the privacy of your home. And now we'll just pause for a few minutes to send these prayer requests out into the universe. And we give thanks in advance for these prayers, and we say, thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. And now let us become centered and still for today's daily word. Today's word for Sunday, June 12th, is pray for others. In love and faith, I pray with you. I am honored to pray with others, and I am grateful when others support me in prayer. When praying hearts and minds are joined, the power of prayer is multiplied. My partners in prayer may be in the same room or far away. We may be close friends or strangers. The power of prayer transcends what mere words can express. So we need not even speak the same language. We share the heart's language of love and faith. Although the appearance of sickness, the perception of lack, or insufficiency or interpersonal discord may have prompted us to pray. We set those concerns aside as we say yes to wholeness, abundance, and harmonizing love that are blessings in our life each and every day. And from Matthew 18, verse 19, again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about it, it shall be done for you by my Father in heaven. Today's daily word, pray for others. And now to prepare for the meditation, let's sing together. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am love. Be still and know that I am here. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still, be still, be still. And know that I am God. Be still and know that I am love. Be still and know that I am love. Be still. Be still, be still, and know that I am love. Be still, and know that I am here. 
be still and know that I am here. Be still, be still, be still and know that I am here. So I invite you now to sit back and close your eyes for meditation. Just find a comfortable position and take several deep breaths, saying to yourself, I am completely and totally relaxed. As we relax our bodies and minds, let us know that every moment spent in prayer is communion with the divine. In this union, we are renewed in mind, body, and spirit, for we touch the hem of divine love. Let us take another deep breath, inhaling divine love and joy, and exhaling any tension And we say to our minds and bodies, relax, relax, relax. As we quiet our thoughts, we feel the presence of God within and around us. Let us just feel this presence now. There is only God and God is love. We can ask ourselves, am I unhappy? God's love is greater than any sadness. Am I having challenges with work or money? God's love is greater than any lack. Am I having difficulties in relationships? God's love is greater than a relationship problem. Am I having any challenges in my life at all right now? God's love is greater than any challenge. There's a simple statement which we can use at any time to uplift our minds and hearts. It is, God's love is greater than this. Let us speak this silently to ourselves and feel the true meaning of the words, God's love is greater than this. The presence of divine love fills our hearts with joy. Nothing can stand in the way of God's love. It is greater than all the difficulties of the entire world, greater than any problem that can ever confront us. Divine love shines from within us like a beacon of light. We place every concern in this light, knowing there is a right and perfect answer. Whatever is on our minds, whatever decisions we have to make, we release to divine love and let the light of love guide us in the best way. And we relax further now into the love of God and turn our thoughts to healing. We feel the love of spirit flowing through us as a healing, cleansing stream flowing in and through us, renewing our cells, tissues and organs, returning us to wholeness. We are assured that healing, all healing is possible. So let us remain still in this healing thought 
and know healing is taking place in our lives right now in this moment as we go into the silence. We know that divine love is the source of all abundance. Our minds are filled with prospering ideas. We affirm prosperity and expect perfect fulfillment through the activity of divine love. Our lives are enriched. But we remember all day today, we rest in God's great love. If an outer challenge appears, we quietly say, God's love is greater. We let, love, or we let God love us and love through us. God's love is so great, it fills all time and all space. It is instant compassion, constant tenderness, and transforming forgiveness. This love is so great, there is nothing in all the universe to prevent it from showering its blessings on us this very moment, this very day. And so as we begin to come back now, stretching our bodies, Coming back to this time and place, we say thank you, thank you, God, for divine love. Thank you for the one presence and one power in the universe blessing us now. And so it is. Amen. What a wonderful world. Sing with me if you feel like it. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and for you. And I think to myself, what? A wonderful world I see skies of blue and clouds of white The bright blessed day, the dark sacred night And I think to myself, what a wonderful world The colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky, are also on the faces of people passing by. I hear friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you. I hear babies cry, I watch them grow. They'll learn much more than I'll ever know. And I think to myself, 
What a wonderful world Yes, I'd think to myself What a wonderful world That's a beautiful song, thank you. Well, some of you may remember me speaking about the fact that when I was five years old, my house burned down. And at that time, I began to think of God as fire. Partly it was because I knew it was going to happen two weeks before it did, and I was trying to warn my family about it. But who's going to believe a five-year-old about something like that, and not only that, what could they do about it anyway? So what happened is my father had, was up late one night. He had been drinking, and he fell asleep in his chair with a lit cigarette. And just as the chair burst into flames, my brother, my 20-year-old brother, happened to come home from a date and walk through the front door at that moment. So he got water, doused the fire, got my dad out of the chair, took the chair out on the front lawn and hosed it down, then managed to get my dad up to bed. And then a while later, before my brother Keith went to bed. He went out, got the chair, brought it around, put it on this, uh, on our screened, uh, open screened in back porch. And um, sometime in the night, apparently, there were some, some embers still smoldering in the chair and the wind probably caused them to rekindle and the flame went up directly above into the attic. So the, the firemen told us we escaped just in time. We, it was a three-story house with a big spiral staircase. The staircase was totally demolished right away, but we got out with moments to spare. And the reason we were saved is because about three weeks before, my dad and I went uh, down to a little market. I always loved to go with them because I'd buy comic books. And when we went to this little market, uh, we heard the, the noise of puppies. And we asked about it, and they brought this big barrel of puppies out, and they started pulling them out and setting them on the floor. My dad told me that I could have one, and it would be my very own, and that I could pick whichever one I wanted. And one of them ran under the counter, and because I was shy, that was the one that I picked. <laughs> I identified with that one. And she was white with really soft brown ears, so we named her Taffy, the taffy-colored ears. And Taffy, after three weeks, was pretty well trained not to bark at night, but that night she barked and barked and barked. And my mother kept trying to resist at first, thinking, oh, no, not again. And then finally, my mother listened, and she heard the crackling and woke us all up, and we got out. So it was um, an amazing experience. As I said, we were told we had only moments to spare. But while we waited, for the firemen to arrive, there was a part of the house not yet burning. And as you know, my interest in astrology, my dad was a Leo. Leos believe in accomplishments and success. My, bro my dad ran back into the house, and what he saved was my brother's scrapbook from high school with all his sports achievements. He had been the best player, basketball player of East High, and he, there were newspaper articles, so that's what my dad said. My brother, the ever practical Virgo, ran back in, saved my dad's glasses. <laughs> my sister and I, both Cancerians, uh, home-loving Cancerians, 
watched from the safety and security of the house next door. I had my dog in my lap holding on for dear life. And then my mother, the eccentric Aquarian, ran in at the last minute, looked around, couldn't find anything to save, and finally off the top of a laundry basket, she grabbed her girdle. <laughs> and of course, for her whole life, she never ever heard the end of that. <laughs> well, from that night on, God and fire became connected for me, partly because of this awareness that somehow there was some greater intelligence letting me know this was going to happen in the first place ahead of time. And then it was also such a traumatic experience. It so transformed our lives, I was awestruck with the kind of power that could come in and totally turn everything around. So the association was partly traumatic, but it was also about awe and power. Well, one man was grateful to think about God in a new way. He was brought to Mercy Hospital and rushed in for coronary surgery. And the operation went well, and as he woke up, he found a sister of mercy waiting by his bed. And she said to him, Mr. Smith, uh, you're going to be fine. Everything went well. And she patted his hand. And she said, but we do need to know, Mr. Smith, how you're going to pay for your stay here. Do you have insurance? No, sister, I'm sorry. Well, do you have cash? No, I don't. Well, do you have any relatives? And he said, well, no, I just have one sister in New Mexico, but she's a humble spinster nun. Oh, Mr. Smith, I beg to disagree, but you know, nuns are not spinsters. We are married to God. Well, wonderful, he said. In that case, just send the bill to my brother-in-law. <laughs> Makes me remember uh, Charles Fillmore, Unity's co-founder, um, story about when a bill collector showed up in the early days of Unity. And he finally said to him, don't worry, I have a rich father who will pay the bill. The collector went off, not realizing that Charles had been talking about God. <laughs> Well, the Bible often uses the image of fire to describe God. There are many images of the divine in the Old Testament, everything from fire to wind to God as Mother Bear or as a great eagle, a loving divine presence, God as Father, Holy Spirit, and on it goes. One of the most wonderful things about unity, I believe, is unity's teachings about God. We come here, you know, for various reasons, whether we're live or online now. Perhaps it's the music. Perhaps it's the social aspect of church making friends. But the bottom line is we are here about God. Whatever you call him, her, father, mother, Holy Spirit, loving presence, divine love, great spirit. Most of us are seekers, and we long to know the divine. Sometimes we need comfort or guidance, or we may have a health challenge and need healing. Certainly, we're all still, still dealing with the impact of COVID on our lives, the devastation of global warming, which we're feeling more all the time, the growing numbers of mass shootings, the polarization in our country, and now the financial impact of inflation and a war that we are supporting in Ukraine. There seems to be a certain level of anxiety now in many people. And I know that as a spiritual community, we've been learning patience, 
through this new way of being in hybrid church. Well, Emmett Fox said in his little book called The Golden Key, the very best remedy for any issue is to take your mind off the issue and focus on God. So sometimes we do have a healing need, or we can't make ends meet, or we need greater prosperity, or peace and harmony in our relationships, or a sense of protection, or deeper purpose and meaning. Whatever it is, we long to know that divine presence and power, that love and light of God. Do you ever feel that longing? Well, rather than the problem, we take our mind off of it and focus on spirit. That's the golden key. Well, a young woman brought her fiance home to meet her parents. And after dinner, um, her father took the young man into his study to have a little chat. And he asked him, he said, well, so what are your plans? And the young man said, well, I'm a theology student. And the father said, well, very admirable, but how are you going to provide a nice home for my daughter? Well, he said, I will study and God will provide. Well, okay, and what if you want to have children? How are you going to afford that? And the young man said, God will provide. And so after a while, they finished their chat and they left the study and the young man went home and the mother came in to talk to her husband and said, well, how did it go? And he said, well, he has absolutely no money and no plans for employment. But on the other hand, he thinks I'm God. <laughs> well, when, when I was applying for ministerial school back at Unity Village, in my entrance exams, I was asked the question, what is your favorite unity principle? And I responded, there is only one presence and one power in the universe, God the good omnipotent. And they tried to trip me up. They played devil's advocate and they said, how can you even say that? I mean, all you have to do is walk a few blocks down the street or turn on the television. People are getting robbed or raped or murdered all the time. There's evil everywhere we look. How can you say there's only one presence and one power in the universe? And I really have no idea what I said. <laughs> that was like 35 years ago. But um, I got into school, so apparently it was right. But um, now, what I now would say is um, that there is one presence and one power. There's a absolute God mind that is one presence and one power, never changing, unlimited. And then there is um, what we would call the relative world of the changing reality in which we do experience pain and suffering and evil. But uh, of course, the Hindus would call that maya or illusion. We don't call it illusion because we do experience it. There are some unity people who say, I'm in hell, but it is not hot. But um, that's not really the standard way of believing about it because we don't see it as illusion, we experience it. But we know it's not the one true reality. And so the more we focus on the divine, the more we manifest a higher reality. So one presence and one power in the universe is the first and basic premise of unity. If anybody asks you what is the main teaching of unity, that is it. In fact, in my mind, one presence and one power is the best unity teaching. There's one presence and one power, and it is good. You know, Einstein once said that the most important question we can ever ask ourselves is, is the universe a friendly place? 
And Unity's answer to that is yes. We believe God is absolute good, not punishing or vengeful, but absolute good. Children have some wonderful ideas about God. The book Children's Letters to God has been around for many years, but it's always still fun to, to read these or hear them. Um, one girl named Jane writes, Dear God, in Sunday school they told us what you do. Who does it when you were on vacation? <laughs> Dear God, how did you know you were God? Charlene. Norma asked, Dear God, did you mean for the giraffe to look like that, or was that just an accident? <laughs> and Nan asked, Dear God, who draws the lines around the countries? Dear God, is Reverend Coe a friend of yours, or do you just know him through business? <laughs> Signed, Danny. Ruth M. writes, Dear God, I think the stapler is one of your greatest inventions. <laughs> And finally from Eugene, dear God, I didn't think orange went with purple until I saw the sunset you made on Tuesday. That was cool. Well, unity is in good company since the world's major religions share the same belief that there is only one God. Some would say that Hinduism is polytheistic with many gods, but it is not true. Hinduism believes in one God, Brahman, and all of the other gods are simply expressions of the one God. It is said Buddhists do not believe in God. Well, I had this great world religion series at my former church and, um, in Torrance, California. And what I did is I had invited experts from the five basic world religions to come and dialogue with me on Sundays about the, their beliefs. And when the Buddhist priest came from the Pure Land tradition, uh, from his large temple in downtown LA, I asked him the first question. I said, uh, do Buddhists believe in God? And he said, oh, you start right out with a very difficult question. And I said, well, let me answer what unity believes first, because I know you don't know a lot about unity, but um, we're, uh, we're different than mainstream Christianity in our beliefs in some respects. And I said, so what unity believes is we believe there's one presence and one power in the universe, God the good, omnipotent, all power, omniscient, all knowing, omnipresent, everywhere present. Um, we also believe that we are in God and God is in us, like the wave is in the ocean and the ocean is in the wave, so we are panentheistic. And um, I went on like this, and then I said, and when I talk to children about God, I talk about Star Wars and the force, that divine force that's present in all things, the life force. And he got a big smile on his face, and he said, how funny you would mention Star Wars. He said, just in a class the other night, that's what I talked about, the life force in all things. And so it was really just an incredible moment of connection, of oneness. You know, because Buddhists like us do not believe in the anthropomorphic white male god with a beard up in the sky, and they do share our unity belief in the life force everywhere present. Judaism teaches there is one God, which is unnameable, since they do not want to take the Lord's name in vain, according to the commandments, but they call him Yahweh, and they say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And Christianity, of course, also teaches that there's one God, through their Old Testament, though their Old Testament God is very different from what unity believes with, we focus more as Jesus did on a God of love rather than a punitive God. Islam borrowed many of its teachings from both Judaism and Christianity, and their basic premise is 
that there is only one God and his name is Allah. We have our collective past to the divine through whatever religious or spiritual tradition we embrace, and we each have our own more individual path, which is important for each of us to reflect upon. Can you look back and see the evolution of your own belief in God? Well, knowing this unity teaching that there is one presence and one power helps us move through times of discord, times of evil, times of collective and personal challenge. And you know, there's a spiritual practice for this principle of unity, one presence and one power, and we call it practicing the presence of God. And so first, um, so I'm, there's numerous ways to do that, but I'm just going to speak about four ways. So the first would be just to feel the presence. So just right now, ask yourself, can I, do, am I feeling the presence of the divine right now? in this gathering today as we talk about God. Whether you're online or whether you're live, can you feel the divine presence? And just take time sometimes through your day to pause and feel that presence. Um, there's, a, there's a Persian aphor, a, aphorism that says, the eye through which you see God is the eye through which God sees you. That's a very profound statement. So just for a moment, feel God seeing through your eyes. Feel God breathing through you. And those are ways to begin to get in touch with that divine presence or to practice the presence of God. A third way is, um, or excuse me, the second way is looking for the blessing, the good in all things. So, because whenever we find good, we find God. So if we have a tragedy, we may not feel the blessing at the time, but it's always there to be discovered later, always there. You know, out of the tragedy of my house burning as a child, I ended up with a lifelong friend. The next day, my dad's employee named Jack, uh, who was a pro his protege, came to visit us and brought his little daughter, Jill. And um, she was three and a half, I was five, but we were the same size. And she brought a sack of clothes because all of my clothes had been burned in the fire. And that was our first meeting, and we are still friends to this day, all those years ago. So that was the great blessing for me that came out of the fire. And I know, you know, there's probably others. We can, again, start considering what the blessings are later, after the fact. And sometimes in the moment, if we're fortunate. But third, uh, we practice the presence by cultivating gratitude. The more we practice looking for the blessing, the more we experience the good in all things, the more we feel grateful until we come to live in a state of gratitude. You know, my two sons and their families are my personal great joy and blessing, and so are my friends. Like this, this past weekend, I'm grateful that Rhonda spoke last week. Um, but I went to Minot, North Dakota to be with my youngest son and his family. And my 14 and 12-year-old grandsons I didn't see much of because of the age, of course. But um, I spent a lot of time with their five dogs. Their five dogs are amazing. And 94 pounds, two 70-pounders, and two 9-pounders. <laughs> And one of the nine pounders is best friends with the 94 pounder. And I would always bite its ears, <laughs> asking for trouble. But anyway, it was a great blessing. And to see they have this large house and this beautiful garden they're planting. And 
my daughter-in-law has a grooming shop that she started with in her basement with one dryer, one sink, and now she has a huge salon for dogs. And it's just wonderful to see that change. So I just felt really blessed by the weekend. And then yesterday, I um, had my tea with Grandma. Some of you have heard me explain that. Since uh, we went into COVID mode and on the internet, I've had to see my two granddaughters in California more online. And so I started having these tea with Grandma times with them. And I sent them uh, plates that my grandma ate on tea, tea, a tea set and extra plates. And I sent them part of it, and I kept part of it. And so they're eating on the plates that their great grandma used, and I'm eating on the plates my grandma used at the same time. So we always have special meal for our tea that they help their mom prepare or their dad. And then sometimes one of their parents will serve the tea while they're sitting with me online on Zoom. And then we have different themes for each of the teas. And yesterday was the birthday tea because one turned nine on the 31st of May and the other will be um, 12 on Tuesday, June 14th. And so we did a happy birthday tea. We both had cake. I had two candles on my cake so they could blow them out from where they were and I could blow them out, tell them their wishes would come true. And then they opened their presents. And so it was a really fabulous time. And one of them had just broken her arm the day before. So, um, but you know, it's such a wonderful way to connect. And that is a real blessing for me through this time. And my friends are a blessing. And another great blessing for me is ministry. I've been so blessed to meet so many incredible people through my years of being and working in Unity Churches. You know, what an incredible blessing. Finally, practicing the presence of God is also passionately falling in love with God and with the wonders of creation. Theologian Matthew Fox said we should fall in love at least three times a day with a flower, a tree, a star, a galaxy, a person, a plant. You know, this um, practice is fabulous to just think about that through your day, falling in love at least three times a day. And this quote is from my book, The Unorthodox Life, Walking Your Own Path to the Divine. We take our journeys in life to become instruments of love, sacred passion, and power for the transformation and regeneration of all. And we discover that our personal divinity was there all the time. So we go on a search as seekers, and we discover the divine presence was there with us all the time. In closing today, the late priest and scientist Teilhard de Chardin once said, someday, after mastering the winds, the waves, the tides, and gravity, we shall harness for God the energies of love. And then for a second time in the history of the world, we will have discovered fire. And the great Sufi poet Rumi said, Set your life on fire. Seek those who fan your flames. And so may you also come to know the best unity teaching of all, that God is one presence and one power. Thank you. Thanks, Reverend Kathy. That presence and power, uh, I know, is always there, but I can't see it. <laughs> so, nature, being in nature, helps me to be reminded. Uh,
Several years ago, I was with my wife uh, at a friend's farm. Uh, with just the two of us sitting at the kitchen table. And it was a beautiful day, and it had been raining. And uh, then the sun came out, and we looked out the window and saw a rainbow and decided we'd go outside and get a better look at the rainbow. So for whatever reason, we both focused on that end of it, and our eyes together followed the rainbow all the way across the arc. I forgot to mention, uh, the friend Christine, uh, Christina, uh, had a lovely garden and uh, then acres and acres of just green grass. So there was this large field of green grass. So we watched the rainbow and followed it and followed it and we saw it land in the grass. What color was it? All right, well, you'll, you'll find out in the song. But <laughs> I didn't tell anybody about that for several years <laughs> because I figured that they would figure that I was delusional. Finally, I wrote a song about it, and that helped me uh, talk about it. It's called The End of the Rainbow. I've seen the end of the rainbow touch the ground. Every hue blend together, turn to gold all around, glowing there on the green grass in the glistening dew. Strange but true, a once-in-a-lifetime vision to share with you. Keep your heart open, there's a blue sky unbroken, and surprises unspoken on your blue horizon. And there are wonders just waiting to be known. All we need is stay connected, they'll become our own. So we can savor the moment that won't come our way some other day. A once in a lifetime vision is there for you. Keep your heart open, there's a blue sky unbroken and surprises unspoken on your blue horizon I've seen the end of the rainbow touch the ground every hue blend together turn to gold all around glowing there on the green grass in the glistening dew Strange but true, a once in a lifetime vision to share with you. A once in a lifetime vision is there for you. Thank you. Awesome music this morning. All right, this is in the time in our service when we bless our offering, and we invite you to go to our website um, to give your gifts at unitynorthmn.org and find the donate button on the home page and give your offerings there. Or if you're in person today, you can place your envelope in the basket in the back of the room. And if you do give cash, please put your name on it so that we can keep accounting of that. And now, together, let's speak our offering blessing. Divine love flowing through me now blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, all that I receive, and I am grateful. Let's sing together, God is the source. God is the source, each of us channels, guiding the good, flowing divine. One endless source, infinite blessings, praise the Creator, thy will is mine. Right now, 
it's time for our community news for this Sunday. And coming up on Monday, we have Monday evening chat with Wendy Erickson. And it is on the third Monday only through the summer. And the next one coming up is on Monday, June 20th at 7 p.m. And the website is listed there of where you can join um, the chat. And it's also listed on our website. So you can find it there. Uh, the men's group meets the second Thursday of each month in person and the fourth Thursday on Zoom at 7 p.m. And the next meeting is Thursday, the 23rd of June, and that one will be on Zoom. And you can call Jim Cox if you have any questions. And upcoming class, the Wheel of the Year, the Wheel of the Year Shamanic Series with Carl uh, is on Zoom and it is on Tuesday, June 21st, and that is at 7 p.m. And I want to just say thank you to all who participated in yard cleanup last week. Uh, as I drove in this morning, everything looks absolutely beautiful out there. And now this little bit of rain that we're getting today, everything is going to be green and absolutely perfect. So thank you so much for your help with that. And there's a new class coming up with Reverend Kathy, and it is Learning to Love Yourself. It's a three-week class um, meeting on June 29th and then the first two um, in July, the 6th and the 13th, and it'll be from 6.30 to 8.30 and it's on Zoom. Um, and it's loving yourself in a breakthrough that can make every area of your life better. It is the key movement in which mental, emotional, and even physical health flows. And you can register now on the website and um, the link is on our uh, homepage as well. And again, our prayer chaplain today is Gretchen Hansen, and her phone number is listed here, 612-483-2379. And that's all our announcements today. All right. Thank you, Wanda, and thank you to Tracy and to Nancy. Let's give them all a hand. And so happy to have you here playing your music today, Bruce. And uh, now we'll speak together our prayer for protection. I invite you to stand for this part, too, those of you who are here. Together, the light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. And now we'll join together in our peace song. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God as our creator, family all are we. Let Walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every breath I take, let this be my joyous vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. All right. So this is the time um, where we can share. We usually invite our virtual people to share first so we can still hear before everybody starts talking here. Anybody have any? 
anything they'd like to say. We're gonna we're, we're praying it works today. Anybody have anything to share? Uh, Candy. I do. <laughs> Yay. I couldn't speak last week because I was so sick, but um, this week I brought a friend with me. Her camera's not on, but her name is Jordan McKenna, okay. and she's from Elgin, Illinois. So I wanted to welcome her. All right, welcome, Jordan. I see your name. That's great. Thank you. I'm glad you're feeling better, Candy. Anybody else? Feel free to share. Hi, Thomas. Okay, our virtual people are getting quieter every week. We have, we'll have to think of some specific questions to ask them. <laughs> so feel free to go ahead and socialize everybody. Have a wonderful week.